Hey guys, it's Slumming Rush, and today we're going to be taking a look at a replay that I played on Vanek's account. In this game, he's in, or I'm in the T20, and um, yeah, so this is on Tundra. It's a standard game. Typically on Tundra, what you're going to find is everyone is funneled into the one and one line and the zero line. Really, those are the only two corridors on this map that you can play viably. In my experience, the zero line isn't even viable because if you try to go play the hill or something, you just get hit by medium. So uh, really, in my uh, opinion, the one line is the only viable place to go. Even in a tank like a T20, you can sort of load gold and brawl the heavies there. You can see they've got a ton of heavies. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to go to the one line. And with that in mind, I'm planning on fighting the majority of their tanks. You can see they've got like six tier eight heavies. Um, and I'm just thinking, okay, that's where the majority of their team is going to be. I want to be able to shoot at the majority of the enemy team. So I'm going to place myself where they're going to be. So you can see uh, I'm driving up to here and ARL just yellows across. That's not normal, but it did happen. <laughs> So I don't know. Likely I set him on fire and I mean really he's just gonna die in a couple seconds One thing to notice though is he's still alive like you'd expect heavy tanks to be having shots But only now after a minute, you know in the game has passed have they come into You know play the heavies are actually able to shoot here So that's actually going to affect me this entire game You're gonna see I'm leading the charge in my t20 which has no armor uh, And I'm just looking for shots in people like this kv5, but the risk is that I just get pushed by these two heavies and potentially two more or, you know, three more. Obviously, their IS-6 is on the zero line, but really there's a huge risk here that I just get pushed by the enemy. Luckily, these guys have started to come up, but they're still going to just sit behind me um, <laughs> and let me take the front lines, I guess. Obviously, it makes sense for that T-34 to stay hauled down there, but really, when you're in a heavy tank, you should be fighting where I am if you can. That allows you to get hauled down and really just shoot at the enemy tanks here. So you can see, I'm focusing on brawling. What you want to do if you're brawling in a lightly armored tank like the T-20 is to shoot people while they reload. You have no chance of bouncing their shells, uh, but obviously when they're loading, they can't shoot you. So I'm just taking advantage of that. You can see I'm looking for shots on this KV-5 who's making it easy for me. Uh, I'm just able to try to put shots into his commander's hatch. So he dies to the RHM. Now they've only got only three heavies right in front of me. Uh, at this time, I'm sort of just like watching this KV-4 and looking at my map. You can see nothing's really happening on the other side of the map. So that's a good thing. The low has started to move up. He's going to put shots into the KV-4, which is good. And really, I'm just going to keep trying to slowly play this and take advantage of the enemy, you know, looking away. You're not paying attention and I can get easy shots into them. Right now the low is sort of pushing up. You can still see behind me we've got a ton of tanks. Uh, <laughs> the RHM just died, which sucks, but really they only have three and one of them's a one shot. So if you look at the one line on the other side, or excuse me, the zero line on the other side of the map, it actually looks like we're gonna lose that. So what we're gonna need to do eventually is start to try to push this side relatively quickly, because honestly they're gonna win this side and then they could potentially cap out. So you're going to see me start to be way more aggressive. You can see I've still got the heavy tanks who are sort of sitting behind me. None of them wants to push, and we're losing the zero line. So I decide, okay, let's just go. Tiger has shot. Uh, I'll lead the charge. Maybe I'll take a hit or two, but, you know, we need to win this side because two tanks shouldn't be holding back five. So you can see I'm pushing into this Tiger. I make a bit of a stupid mistake here. I actually end up taking a hit, but, you know, it happens, I guess. That the IS-3 just shot, and I thought I could beat his reload twice. So I put one into him. Obviously not used to the T-20's DPM, but you, you're going to see. I, I shouldn't have taken this hit here, but whatever. Put one into him, just track him. So pretty terrible trade. But in the end, we did end up winning this flank. And you can see we've lost the other side of the map, so there is that. I'm able to get the kill on the IS-3. And now it's sort of like a point in time where we definitely need to go back to base. Their M44 spotted, he's dead. But really, they could have a T43 and SP1C and an IS-6 pushing into our base. So keeping that in mind, I'm sort of asking the team to fall back, but they aren't. Uh, and they're just going to keep pushing through. So right now what I'm sort of thinking is I have to try to potentially defend the base against an IS-6. Uh, T43 and SP1C, and actually they don't have an E25, uh, like they have an E25 who hasn't been spotted all game, so 
he is probably defending their base, but you know, it's important to think about things like that. So their T43 is right here. What I've done is we have an IS-2 right over here and I have come over to here. So that's gonna give them, or it's gonna put them into a crossfire if they wanna push onto our cap. That's really important because when you're in a tank like this, such as the T20 and you've shot uh, <laughs> all 17 or all 18 of your gold shells, really I just have one left, it's, you know, you start to have to flank things. And luckily at the end of the game, it's possible. So you can see I'm on the side of these guys. I do have side shots on the I-6. I'm looking for the shot. The thing is AP, which has 160 pen, will almost never pen the side of an IS-6. So I didn't actually take that shot. You can see their E-25 is going after our artillery. And right now I'm sort of in a crossfire, right? I've got the T-43 right here and the E-25. So, um, I'm just hoping for the best right now. I'm hoping that the T-43 doesn't shoot at me and I have to go after the E-25. The E-25 lost his hit points somehow, I'm not sure how, uh, but we are able to get the kill. Suddenly a KV-3 <laughs> suddenly appears. So I'm running away. Again, this is really lucky that he didn't shoot me. So pretty much, you know, you're gonna have to get lucky sometimes. I was in a bad position. The way I attacked that E25 was definitely the wrong thing to do. What I should have done is I should have just used cover from this to protect me from the uh, T43, but you know, it happens. So the KV3 is now looking at me. He, you know, I'm not gonna try to trade with him if he's looking right at me. The IS2 is able to pick up the kill. And now we just have to deal with an ISU. <laughs> and an SP-1C. Now the SP-1C is on full HP and I'm not sure what the ISU's health is on. Uh, and if you look at our team, a lot of them are actually just like one shots for the ISU. So that's actually problematic. You can see the ISU has 600 hit points and the SP-1C is on full. So right now we're sort of faced with this situation where we have to push into a TD, which is never a good situation to be in. Uh, we're down at T34. Now it's just the low and myself. You can see the IS-2 is sort of just on the bridge here. You know, he's slowly getting into the fight. The low has just become a one-shot for the SP-1C. Um, <laughs> and now it's just me. The IS-2 and the Tiger are still sort of getting into the fight. I look for a shot on the ISU. I actually get spotted here, so the ISU is going to turn around, and that means I'm going to have to run away. So what I have to do is I have to wait for the ISU and the Tiger, and Obviously, you're going to want to do this too if you're in this type of situation. Uh, and you just have to keep, you know, play with your teammates. <laughs> Pushing into an ISC 152 alone is never a good place to be. So, yeah. Right now, I just thought of something. Obviously, we could put someone on cap, then they have to push into us. There is that rock. That would be a totally viable thing to do. Uh, I normally don't cap out. It's just. I don't find it fun, so even when it's smart to cap out, sometimes I totally forget about it. There's the ISU, he's on 500 hit points. He just shot, so I was able to put that shot into him. You can see we've got a Tiger who currently doesn't have shots, but if he keeps moving up, he will have shots on the ISU. So there is that. One thing though is the SP-1C has gone dark. So what I'd expect him to do is he's gonna probably try to come up here and try to flank me. I'm aware of that and you can see, uh, just as I mentioned it, I'm looking behind me. So there is that. I, what I wanna do is I wanna kill the ISU before the SP-1C gets a chance to flank me. And so I kill the ISU. I know he's coming behind me. I'm able to just push up to here and I can wait. So there he is behind me. I'm using the low for cover. He shot one. He's using heat, so just keeping that in mind, if I need to, I might have to try to bait his shell into my tracks. Obviously, heat can't pen tracks very well, so, you know, it's just in the potential. Uh, right now, the SP-1C has at most one shell left, so I'm just going to push into him, and I managed to get the rolling ram kill <laughs> to finish off my top gun. Alrighty, so uh, hopefully this was helpful. A lot of people have trouble with the map Tundra because it's a shit map. Really, it's dedicated to where it's heavies, TDs, and artillery, and even like <laughs> heavies have a shit time with it because honestly, Artie just sits up at A1 and K1 and blasts everyone on the one line. So um, this is how I play this map. I just load gold and kill all the heavies on the one line if I can. You know, sometimes it doesn't work out, but really, I <laughs> I don't find the zero line beneficial at all. Even if you're in a tank like the T20, I would suggest you know, playing it like I did. So uh, yeah, let's go look at the end plates. Well, alrighty, so as you can see, that was a mastery badge, uh, bruiser, uh, fuck, fuck these, high caliber top gun, 2,500 XP. That was not a double, I'm pretty sure. Let's see, I feel like an idiot. Yeah, I don't think that was a double, holy shit. What the fuck, that was 2,500, okay. Um. <laughs>
3,750 damage, 6 kills, 1673 base XP. That was a way better replay than I thought it was. Naturally, though, uh, you know, spammed gold. So I lost 31,000 credits. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video was somewhat helpful. I realized Tundra is like just completely shitty. So uh, sorry, I can't give you any other answer than spam gold at heavy tanks uh, for how to play this map. Because really, like... No one knows. It's a shit map. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you want to send me your own replays, feel free to link me down or know what you do. Send me an email. The email will be in the description. It's lemmingrushreplays at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this. Bye-bye.